Well, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and let's get into the video that should have been made a while back, but let's, let's kind of get into it. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people are buying these Bofang radios, and here are a couple. Now, these are the Bofang 82s. I'll take the, the battery off the back. Bofang UV82. Now, these are the commercial models. Uh, why? Because in my actual application, uh, the commercial models would just keep me out of any, any issues uh, where I can keep people from being able to switch from uh, frequency mode to channel mode, okay? Now, the Bofang UV82 is about the very best Bofang that they've made. Not about. It is the very best Bofang that they've made. There are some problems with them. There are this, that, or the other. I'll get into that here in the next little bit. But, I'm going to tell you God's honest truth. And there have some little idiosyncrasies and you need to get the Chirp software and get the programming cable. Um, now, all, these both of these radios I bought on Amazon, but they both have are made through... Uh, I don't know, Bofang Limited, Bofang whatever. And everything that I purchase is from them. They're down in Texas and they warranty this stuff for a year. One thing about Bofang radios, if you when you buy it and you initially buy it and you set it up and this, that, or the other, it works. If it works, you you've got a good radio. But there is no customer service. There is no this, that, or the other. You have to pay a few more dollars for even the warranty for a year. Um, Bofang is actually... Uh, they're now called Pofang, uh, Bofang and Pofang. Now, they changed the name to Pofang in 2014. Can you buy these radios for less? Probably if you don't get the C version. What the C version, as I said, allows me to do is to lock off the frequency mode and keep uh, people who aren't as used to using these things, uh, keep them legal, basically. Now, I'm going to tell you I have my technician's license for ham radios, okay? There are clubs that you can get into for amateur radio. Um, I sometimes always use the word shortwave because that's just the way. That's the way, man. I was, I was raised. I cut my teeth on this shit. I'm not, you know, amateur radio is is the term that is probably more correct. But I still have always called them shortwave. Um, these operate in the two meter band, and, and uh, you just have to get into it. Learn what these things are. They have two different versions of these as far as the frequencies they operate into. Um, but let's just turn one on and just see where, where we're going here. Channel mode. Of course, this is in channel mode, as you heard. And you can sit there and scan through the channels. It tells you two different sets of channels. This operates on one watt or 5 watts, okay? You can say it's 4 to 5, whatever. But it will transmit and receive. It will transmit on two different powers, so power settings, okay? A high and a low, and you can get to that through the Chirp software, or you can get through it through, through the handheld. Uh, my recommendation is getting the Chirp software. It's free, and then I bought a programming cable that is USB and downloaded the current drivers, downloaded the current version of Chirp, and I had absolutely no problem, was up and running, I swear to, in, in less, and I had a radio programmed in less than an hour. Um, you can get on YouTube, and there are some really good videos of people actually uh, showing you how to program these things, and, and using current versions, and even if they're doing the, the UV5, um, it's still very similar. Now, these are totally redesigned radios, um, but, you know, they scan yeah, quite well. Since I have a technician's license, I can sit there and transmit and receive on uh, 
Saturday and Saturday night. Not just Harley FRS. Car. Highs in the upper 50s. In the upper 30s. Now I've got it set for NOAA, and it's going to scan through the NOAA stations and this, there, or the other, and we're scanning on our lower. The one thing cool about this is if you're do, going to go uh, FRS, and I'm right now not even thinking about this because I'm still in the Sharp Maker video, but FRS and GMRS, the GMRS and the FRS, you have to have a license to transmit using these radios. There are a couple different legality reasons as to why you have to do that. And even if you set the power setting on low, uh, which is one watt, there are a couple things you have to, to understand. One watt is still double the power of any FRS uh, transmitter. Uh, you can go up to two, possibly, and this, that, or the other, but the ones that are really FRS and they really want, they transmit on half a watt, okay? And they're limited to half a watt. And you can go to the FCC and look all this crap up. And there's a lot of misleading shit out there. But even if the power, even if you're transmitting at one watt and it's okay, this, that, or the other, which I don't believe that it is through the FCC, it has a removable antenna. Now, why is that important? Because the removable antenna extends the range of this radio. Now, you can see on this one, we have an, an NA, a Nagoya NA701. Now, I had a Nagoya 771, which is the longer one. This is about an 8-inch antenna. And it, had, it developed a short in it. So, as I said, any of this stuff that's made in China, you really have to know what the hell you're doing. Uh, and test the stuff out and possibly ha you know have a an understanding but when you shook it you would get a uh, you get a you get a problem uh, you'd get static through the radio and get a get a blip um, and you know it picked up when it was in the right orientation and when that short wasn't you know shorting it out it did perfect uh, if you're going for ultra long range, the 7, uh, 771 Nagoya is a really great one. You have to understand that there's a lot of copies of the Nagoyas. I bought mine again from those uh, same people I bought the, the C's from. And, you know, supposedly theirs is guaranteed to be real. Uh, mine did not come with a hologram, but everything else seemed to check out. And uh, they were the most updated version of the Nagoyas. Now, is the Nagoya 701 worth getting? If you want an 8 inch antenna that receives better than the one that comes on the uh, on this one yeah I would definitely I definitely go there okay now because I can hit repeaters with this one and I can hit frequencies with this radio with the 701 that I cannot get with a standard rubber ducky antenna uh, that comes with it. Now this is probably the best antenna, stock antenna that Nagoya has ever made or that uh, Bofang has ever sold with any of their products but it still has its limitations, okay? So if these radios cost, you know, $55 a piece, you've got, you know, less, about however much, 12, however much in the, in the cable. The program's cheap, uh, it's free. And then you've got the 701, which is about $15 uh, through the supplier that I got it from. These aren't the cheapest option. You can go cheaper, uh, but I had to have something I could use in a commercial setting and monitor uh, basically our shortwave system uh, that, we, that we use at the, uh, at the business. And uh, something that, was, that looked commercial and looked reputable. I didn't want to walk around with something that kind of looked like a toy. Um, now, you can, of course, it has attachments, which are the uh, Kenwood attachments for the, uh, you know, earbuds. It comes with a set of earbuds uh, where you can sit there where then has dual transmit, not only on the radio, so you can transmit at di two different frequencies, and you can monitor two different frequencies once you get into the settings 
and a lot of people make videos about this stuff. I'm just trying to give you a broad general overview of the type of equipment uh, because once I start getting once you start getting this you know this is a slippery slope. You start getting into shortwave stuff. It's just a slippery slope and you will never ever ever stop learning. Uh, it's a you know get your technician's license so you can transmit with these radios FRS GMRS and uh, then transmit off the repeaters um, I've got these set up to, to hook up FRS GMRS uh, the local repeaters and then the NOAA radio uh, I'm going to hook them up to where uh, they can be used for the uh, marine bands uh, because I go on the water quite a bit these are not, uh, you know, these aren't something that you want to dunk. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get these things wet. Uh, as far as their weather resistance, there's, you know, mo more weather resistant than previous Bofangs supposedly. Uh, but then you've got your microphone um, hole there, and you just don't want to, don't want to do that. Um, one problem that people, you know, people want to whine about these radios. They're a couple different ones. One that the marking on the batteries are wrong. And I'll give you a prime example of that. Uh, it says lithium ion 2800 milliamps. And I believe all of these batteries, and they'll tell you on the website that all these batteries are 1800. Uh, and that that was just a misprint uh, from the manufacturer. And some people have taken advantage of that misprint and tried to come up with a whole different line of radio uh, and say it's a an L or, or something like that uh, for long life battery but there's only one battery design uh, so don't be fooled by that uh, also people have you know had problems with the chargers well the new chargers that are coming out with these things and I'll try to take this apart uh, real quick on video let's see if I can do it probably not going to be able to do it with that one. Let's get our IDL tool out because I took it out of my that one survival kit. Now this is the T10 but it's got a small Phillips and I, sometimes that's a good thing. Let's take these screws out real quick and just see where we're at and show you how they've actually modified the charger. You got to be careful with the information that you get on the internet because it could be current, it could might not be current, this, that, or the other. One of the things about these C's and about some of the stuff, uh, you know, you want one, you want one of any of these radios with the most current firmware, okay? Since this firmware on these radios are not rewritable. Uh, you want all the patches, you want all the current stuff. So you've got to make sure that you have that. And I'll show you here in a second how to get that, I, I hope. Um, but what they've done with these chargers is they've connected them with two wires. Where it used to just be, you can sit there and see that it that would just friction fit there and people were having problems. So they went with a setup that actually has two wires connecting it. Now let me get this puppy back together. Uh, but I'll just set it off to the side because it's not really relevant to what we want to talk about. As far as your firmware for one of these radios, I believe you hold down the 5, turn it on, and all of a sudden you're going to get your firmware down there and it's going to flash, okay? Now, um, that's how you check and see if you got a current radio or not. So I would, you know, if you if you try to go the ultra cheap route, which I didn't, I thought fifty five dollars per radio and having the commercial so that I could lock people out uh, around the the business was worth it to me. Um, as you know, it's it's just you don't want somebody going into frequency mode. And uh, you start transmitting on five watts of power, and then you get in, in trouble because big targets, if you live in populated areas and this, that, or the other, and the bigger your company is, or the bigger 
you are as a as a financially as a person as a company as this there or the other you know you make an awfully big target and people like to shoot at big targets you know it's it's fun to sit there and shoot at eggs at a hundred yards okay and bust eggs but it's a hell of a lot more fun and you get a hell of a lot more satisfaction out of shooting at, at water balloons at 20 uh, because you get to see the thing blow up you get to do this there the other da 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 there's a lot bigger payoff well, in the financial arena, that's the same thing. In the financial um, type, anything like that, the more exposure you have, the more people are gunning for you. The more successful you are in any business, the more people are gunning for you. Uh, so people use these things for churches. They use them for you know all different kinds of things. People, you can use them around a race car. Uh, you can use them for you know anything. Uh, but my biggest recommendation is for a portable ham radio that's affordable uh, that you don't have to worry about. You know, 50, you got 55 bucks, and even if you put a $15 antenna on it, you've got, uh, you know, 70 bucks in the whole whole gig rigmarole shipping everything if you're an Amazon Prime uh, member, and you get the commercial model. If you don't get the commercial model, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be able to buy it for maybe $45 or $40, and you're going to be able to, you know, put a $15 antenna at 55 bucks. Well, who the hell cares? When you're talking about ham radio equipment, that is, that is nothing. Um... Uh, would I recommend getting any of the other ones? No. Uh, this, is, this is the way I went, and this is, I do not regret this in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I will never, ever. Of course, I bought one, and then I bought the other one. Because I didn't want to just commit to two real quick without having hands-on knowledge. And I watched a lot of videos, and I did a lot of stuff. And Yeah, did I probably get OCD about it? Yeah, probably did. Uh, but... It was worth it to me uh, to wait a little time. Have I known about these for a long time? Are they a known commodity? Yeah. But I just want to give you that kind of overview and my interpretation of this product. Do I wish it wasn't made in China? Yeah. But do I think it's a value? It's an extreme value. This is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and have a good one.